Sup, cunts. Really shouldn't start my vlogs out that way, huh? I'm eating a bacon, egg, and cheese. Something about this sandwich is just so fucking satisfying. It rarely gets messy, unless they overload it. Sometimes they put too many eggs so that when you bite into it, it like slides out. Number one problem with sandwiches, slidey sandwiches. When the inside of the sandwiches become too much, overbearing, take a bite, it slides out. Next thing you know, you're biting bread, but you got a whole chicken tender in your, in your hand. It's uh, Friday, December 18th, so we are a week away from Christmas. I don't recommend drinking a monster when there's an AM after the time, but hey, you get to live once. Hopefully you get to die multiple times. Fridays are probably my favorite day of the week. I don't have much to do. That's not the reason why I, Fridays are my favorite day of the week. They're my favorite day of the week in the sense that I don't have much to do, but that opens up time for planning future shit, right? There's, there's nothing, no piece of content that I need to be making today based on this week of fantasy football. So I get to start, you know, either prepping for next week or thinking about like off season projects. And since we're almost wrapped up with week 15, by the time you guys watch this, the championship honestly might be over. I get to start looking forward to the off season, which for me is super fucking exciting. It's my favorite time of the year. You know, as much as we talk about fantasy football here, like the off season is really what I get excited about because we get to practice a lot of different creative types of projects. For instance, right now, you know, we're working on the app. So it's on its way into the app store, not live, but you put it into this app called Test Flight. It's like an app created by Apple, I wanna say, or maybe it's a third party, I'm not really sure who makes it. It's called Test Flight. You can upload your app into it, and then you can actually use it on your phone as an app, but like it's not available to the public yet. We're in the early stages of making it into a real thing for the mobile. Sorry, the other camera died. I forget what I was saying. I was, I think I was thinking about, I was forget I had those in. We we're talking about the app was going to the store. The guy, Mike, who is developing the app, he had kind of reached out whenever we started working at this. At this point, it's almost two months now. He basically reached out and, and kind of like the way that this brand has been built and the company has been built has been completely natural, right? Like I haven't outsourced things just for the sake of outsourcing them or even just scaled for the sake of scaling for the most part. Almost everyone who's involved with what we're doing is someone that's come from like a really natural path in a sense. So Snacks and Animal, obviously, we grew up together in the same town. Mike's been a long time follower. He was at both of the NYC draft weekends. Noah has been a blogger for like four years. Noah was like probably the one person who I actually like actively recruited in a sense. Like I opened up, I was like, I want more bloggers on the website and he applied whatever I put, he, he ended up getting through the process. Scott reached out and was like, I, you know, I love the lifestyle, I love the fantasy football stuff that you're doing. I'd love to be a part of it. I'll work for free, you know, for X number of whatever. And that's kind of what happened with with Mike, Mike, the app developer, and Ike is another person from my hometown who helps out, who does the editing for like Bagels and Locks. He does a lot of the vlogs that we do. At, whenever a Fade the Public episode starts with a vlog, he does that. And Scott does all like the, the stuff at the actual table itself. So everything's come natural. And Mike was someone who reached out very much like Scott, where he's like, I really like what you're doing. Do you have any projects that you want to work at, work on? I'm like a, a developer in a sense, or like a backend developer, apps, mobile, whatever. And I was like, yeah, like I've honestly wanted to do the mobile app for a while. I just like didn't even know where to get started. Where do I look for a person in this person? and kind of just like naturally naturally reach out the right time we want to launch in april may sometime around there he reached out in you know september october that six seven months eight months whatever gave us leeway to plan execute and that's what we're doing right now with the app so i get to brainstorm on fridays like that this is one of the days where i like to brainstorm a little bit for the app ideas because we'll obviously have all the fantasy content that we had in the draft guide last year there's so much else that goes into planning this because you're completely switching the path of giving the content in a sense to you guys the audience like how the deliverability like yes we could just take all the blog posts from the draft guide and move it over to the app but like that's not that fucking cool i want it to be more of an experience you know if that was if that was the case i would have just left it on the blog right it's easier you guys can access that on your web on your mobile you can access that on the computer but i want this to be different i want this to be a lot different so there, there there's a lot that goes into thinking about how we want to actually deliver the content within the app itself and, and different quirky ideas that we have for it so brainstorming is a big thing for me on fridays i want to start thinking about other off-season projects i do the um behind the business of fantasy football interview series if you guys haven't checked that out i sit down every monday with someone in the fantasy space that i think is doing a good job innovating uh who's been successful who has kind of maybe come from a different path than most other people and at this point, we're about three seasons into it. So I want to say we're almost like 30 episodes into it. And I'm starting to try to figure out like where I want this series to go. Because eventually we're going to hit a roadblock where it's just like I can bring on this guy who has like 80,000 followers on Twitter. But at the end of the day, he's just like another blogger or content creator. I'm trying to find different people that I think fit the mold of, of what I'm... In a sense, this is kind of like a selfish 
interview series. Like I'm trying to learn from people that are above me or doing something very different from me so that I can kind of take inspiration from them. But I do also want people out there that are maybe just starting to break into the industry to get inspiration from these people and be like, oh, you know what? There's not one right path or two right paths or 10 right paths. There's a zillion right paths, right? Wherever many fucking humans are on earth. Seven billion, there's seven billion right paths because the only right path is your right path. How beautifully said was that? I'm starting to plan for that. I'm starting to figure out who I wanna bring on for that series. And every time I ask it on Twitter, like people are like, yo, who do you wanna see on for the series? And they tag a lot of people and I feel bad because like all the dudes are nice that they tag, but again, they're not doing really anything innovating. They're just like content creators that they like. They're bloggers or they're podcasters. And I'm like, I'm looking at this from more of a branding and marketing perspective, like who's actually pushing the envelope here? And I think we've seen some cool stuff in the off season. I wanna have on Jonathan Bales. He was the, he was a dude who did like the 2000 pushups in 10 hours or whatever. I'm sure a lot of you guys know he's, he started a few different businesses. I, I want to say it was the, no, it wasn't Action Network. It was Roto Grinders or something, whatever. I forget what company he started, but he ended up selling it. And he's just a wildly smart dude, very into business, very passionate about it. And I was like, this is, you know, he's almost like what I imagine I'll be in like 10 years. Dude's an absolute animal. So I've been trying to get him on. I actually DM'd him on Twitter. He eventually answered me and was like, I'm not doing any pods in season. And I was like, okay, I'll reach out in the off season. So he's kind of like hesitant. I don't know if he's gonna come on or not, but I think I'll be able to annoy him enough to get him on. I also wanna do the founder of Underdog Fantasy. So the draft app that a lot of us use for best ball, they obviously branched off and started Underdog. It's the same team. I wanna get the founder of that who's doing a lot of interesting things outside of that business wise. I wanna get Rowan from Barstool because he was supposed to be on it last time, but COVID happened. So I'm trying to find people within the space and, and I'm having trouble realistically. Like if I wanna do 10 to 12 episodes a year every Monday throughout the off season until the NFL draft, I'm like, honestly, I don't think there's enough innovation within the space right now or enough people that I think are inspiring me that make me look at things differently. And there have been some cool different little niches within the space that I think are, are cool. Like email newsletters for one. There are a few people I see actually monetizing their email newsletter on a weekly basis. This dude, Ben Gretsch, has been able to use what they call, it's a new platform, I think it's called Substack, where you can have like a $5 a month weekly newsletter and it's a quick way to monetize. Those are the types of people I'm looking for. Like people who are business minded, but doing things differently than the rest of the group. So I might stick within the fantasy football space, but I might start branching out a little bit to just creators in general, but I just, I don't want that to become like just another podcast of a creator interviewing a creator. You know what I mean? Like when it's really niche, it has something kind of special to it that you feel like a part of this very unique journey and it's very personal to you because it's a niche that you're very passionate about. It's cool. Like I, I would probably enjoy conversations with people outside of it and that's more personal to me, but maybe those conversations would be better off or would fit what I'm doing better one-on-one -on -one conversations I could have with the person off camera. If that, I, I don't know if that really makes sense or not. I just don't want it to fall into another interview series. Basically like every podcast nowadays is just like one person sitting down with another interesting person and talking about like their journey. And I'm just like, I like the idea of talking about stuff within the fantasy industry because it's just so fucking untapped. So that's been fun for me. So I'm planning the app right now. We're planning the behind the series interview, tax accounting things that I don't know if I should bring up. Like basically I finally found an accountant who's gonna be able to help me out with these New York City taxes. So we're actually gonna set up the business in New Jersey. We're gonna have two businesses now. We're actually gonna be operating as two separate businesses, but I won't bore you guys with that. And then as always, we're just trying to, I want the other guys on the team to really like, you know, I sent them I sent them this text message. I'll throw it up on the screen to you guys because as we expand, you know, I don't want to put limits on the create. Listen, here's the thing, like people 99% of the time will surprise you, right? If you give them the opportunity to work hard, to be creative, to put whatever they have in their mind into real life, it's going to be so different than what you think that it's going to be really cool when it comes out. It's going to be something that you never would have seen from the angle that you're looking at it because everyone has different experiences. So like when you let other people use their creativity, so much good stuff happens. You know, like I started this company by myself, obviously, and all the ideas for the first two, three, four years, whatever it was, were all mine. But for the majority, the last like year, two years, in terms of like innovation and, and growing in different directions has come from other team members and the ideas that they have. So I never want to stifle that because that's the way I, th I, th I think we continuously keep growing as a brand. And like, I never look at it as like, you know, these are like my teammates, right? Like I'm not, maybe I'm like the captain or the leader of the team, but I'm not like the CEO of the business and they're the players, right? This isn't like an NBA fucking franchise where I'm a piece of shit owner and those are like the five, the starting five lineups or anything, right? Like we're working together. We 
all want the same goal, and I don't look at myself above them. Yes, I'll lay down the motherfucking dictator slap if a, if a motherfucker need to, but I don't want to do that. I want people to grow themselves into it. So I sent out the text, and I'm like, I want you to think of a big project that you would be proud of doing. Because at this point, like, I like putting out the content on a daily basis, but there are a few things that really fucking hit me where I'm like, I'm super proud of that. And the Behind the Business interview series is one of them. The New York City Draft Weekend Experience is one of them. The Draft Guide, obviously, which is a killer seller and revenue source for us is, is another one of them. So we have like three to five within the business that I'm proud of that are like pillars of what we're doing here and how we're growing. But if we can have each person bring one more to the table, we're looking at like four, five, six, seven that we can build the foundation on and broaden ourselves from that. And I, I always yell about foundation, 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 foundation. The stronger the foundation, the higher you can build, the bigger you can build, the stronger you'll be when things get tough. The windier shit gets, the bigger the fucking hurricane, the stronger the foundation you have, that shit's not gonna blow over, okay? So I don't wanna cut corners, I want things to come naturally always, but in that, it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of patience over a long period of time. So that's why I like Fridays, because I get to go on rants like this, I get to just put on my creative pants, hit the fucking whiteboard hard, and think about how I wanna do things, because we've had Monday through Friday, all the content is already put out. Saturday and Sunday, the only thing we do is a live stream on Saturday, so I don't really need to prep for that in a sense, it's just kinda of show up and show the fuck out. So we will start to hammer down those ideas. In the off season, we'll do a lot more content like this. I'm gonna pick back up the Why Yelling podcast, which will be really fun, because Steve, I don't know if any of you guys have listened to the Dave Portnoy show that they just picked pick back up on podcasting, but it's really fucking awesome. It's super cool to see like the inside workings of Barstool from Prez's viewpoint. And I wanna do something in a similar sense where Steve comes in and we get to do a piece of content together, which in its own right is, is really cool. And he's like the person I'm most comfortable around. Like he knows me so, he knows, I think he literally legitimately knows me better than I know myself. Like he knows how, what I'm gonna do in certain situations, how I'm gonna react to shit, which freaks me out sometimes. But I think a conversation between him and me, not just like about what's happening, I, I know it's like super pretentious to think that I would have enough to talk about, about big dogs is like what Dave Pornoy does in Barcelona. But I think r r the point is like, he had, it's a very cool setup and style of podcast in which he's completely transparent. I always try to do that with y'all obviously. And I think Steve is the one person that can bring it. The, the reason he's gonna be so good with it is because he can bring out anything in me. Like if I'm thinking about something, he'll know what I'm thinking about and like how to, ask the question or how to say it so that it comes out of me in a, in a sense, you know? So we're gonna cover a lot of things like big dogs behind the scenes, all the way down from like finance, the people on the team, to shit I'm upset about, the things I'm working on, to a lot more like life conversations as well. So I'm actually, that, that might be the thing I'm like most looking forward to in the off season. So if you're not already subscribed to Why You Yelling on Apple, on wherever the fuck y'all listen to podcasts, make sure you go do so. I'll link that in the description. And that's really it. I know, I think I've said that to try to end this clip like seven times already, but now it is time to work. We having a party at the HQ for New Year's Eve. This place looked like, I didn't get a before or after picture, but this place looked like an absolute shit show. We have pulled it together. It's only like five o'clock. People are not coming until about eight o'clock. What time do you start New Year's Eve parties at? Normal parties, if you start like, hey, we're starting at like seven, like anyone could dip out by like 10.30, 11.30 if they wanna go home or whatever. Fucking losers. But like New Year's, you know you're in that for shit for the long haul. You know you're in it till midnight, the earliest. And since you're staying till midnight, you're probably trash and you're probably like, okay, let's just stay for a little bit longer. So now is like when I get anxious, when I start, I clean the entire fucking place. I got a new office chair also, it's the, I have no idea, it doesn't matter at this time. I need to figure out where to put this. I'm literally gonna like throw it in the hallway. And I just told him like, just don't throw my shit out. Only because I was gonna throw it out, but a friend of mine wants that chair. I don't know what's wrong with her. Like I'm, I'm like, bro, people make fun of me and bully me on the internet all the time because of the chair, because it's disgusting, it's ripped. It's, it's supposed to be, it was like pure white. It was like the color of this when I first got it. And now as you can see, my, sweat from podcasting over the last, I had it since I was in my mom's house. I had it for like four or five years. Got ass cheek sweat on there. I just probably spent like $300 already. Got like 92 bottles of champagne, 92 bottles of wine, 42 packs of white claw, vodka, rose, ears, we got more white claw, tequila and more vodka and a bunch of whole other shit downstairs. So now we just wait for the gang to show up. Now I know this is like very questionable. I was actually debating whether or not to even make this vlog. Do we put 
a vlog about us like kind of being together and hanging out and shit. It's been a long year. These are my very, very close friends that are coming. It's only gonna be, it's not like a, a crazy rager. Not, not for lack of trying. I tried to have like 38 people here, but that's what happens when you don't have a lot of friends. It's gonna be a small group. Not an excuse, but we're mid twenties living in New York City. Like I'm trying to live my life a little bit. We don't go out ever. We don't go to bars and stuff. So have a little soiree with my close friends. We'll bring in the new years together and hopefully shit will get better in 2021. Let's check out the downstairs. Thanks. So this is downstairs right now. This is where we stream our games. So if y'all ever hung out, this is what it looks like from our vantage point. I just bought this four foot table like off Amazon knowing that damn well I can return it afterwards. We put together the bar over here. I have actually haven't vlogged in a minute. So you guys probably have not seen this. But we have the bar where we obviously have more tequila and fucking mama Juana if you've ever had this. You know how this night's about to go. We've got the mini fridge finally set up. And we've got a couple other things. So the place down here is coming together quite nicely. I think this is like good enough for, you know, a 10 to 15 person goes into this is the worst part about it because I had to clean my fucking room and make it not be like unpresentable. But I think we're fine here. Ja, 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 ja. It actually stinks like tequila in here. This is probably a horrible fucking idea. Bathrooms are supposed to smell nice, not mine. All right, so I'll probably uh, record some stuff later. As long as like some people might just be like, dude, don't record. It's weird that we're all celebrating being together when we shouldn't be together, feel uncomfortable doing it, but fuck them. Playing this shit. Hey, it's 11.59. Oh my fucking boys are here. Hey, fill me four glasses. All right, I don't know how you want me to do this. I don't either. No. You're literally like, mixing the rich and the poor champagne. How much time we got? 40, 39! Holy shit! Going into 2021. Golf! I love y'all motherfuckers. You dumb motherfuckers. They're making sure I have good content. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We got the content. We got that. There's love. There's hatred. There's beauty. And there's degenerates. I have Whoa, a huge... Who said that? That was Jason. <laughs> Jason! <laughs> Jason! Look how he moved back. That was Jason who said that. Jason! Jason's embarrassed for me to say that because he knows that he's Asian and it's bit, very yeah. small, so he doesn't want to admit to it. Heather, you can come here. We can talk about it. So we have to deal with these men on a regular basis. How does it make you feel having to deal with this? On a regular basis. He's constantly wiping his boogers on me, constantly farting on me, but I love him anyway. She still loves him. You hear that, everyone? Love will happen for no matter who you are, whether you wipe your boogers on someone, whether you fart on someone. We will make sure there's love for you. Yeah. Who is this too? It's Wilson! Eric Colano, you're definitely gonna be watching this and you're gonna be so pissed because you're sober and we're drunk. And I'm not sorry. I'm so not sorry. I'm so Heather, tell me you're not sorry. About what? About recording this content. This is gonna be like prime content. Like you're welcome. Ma 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 this looks all right let's have it let's see what's upstairs we're not sure wow look at this my name is nigger guano and this is big dogs gotta eat this is amazing big dogs gotta eat isadori how do you feel in 2021 uh, I hate Nick's sister. That's a lie. What's your feelings? What's my feelings about what? About 2021. 2021 is going to be a big year. We all got through this year. We prospered. But now it's time to glow up a little bit. A glow up? Now just to glow up a little bit. Big Raul. 
What the fuck is good, yeah. bro? Don't get locked out of the department. Yes, sir. Hey. <laughs> Nick, you're going on. It's 2021. How do you feel? It's, it's 2021, so it's a new year. We have a lot of exciting plans in the works. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'm like damn. Close the goddamn door. Lock in bed. Tell. I'm telling. I'm telling. I'm, tell I'm having a lot of bad. How the fuck do you lock this shit? I don't know. You live here. I did it. Wait, who are you talking to? Love Raul. Anything about the amount of years that you put into the friendship. It's uh, the amount of friendship that you put into the beers. I don't know if I die for all of them, but I die for like probably like 75% of them. That's me, he died for me. I think I, think I would take a bullet. I'm editing the vlog footage right now, the clips that you just watched. You guys probably only got about two minutes of that. That's probably all you could handle. That was the most embarrassing shit I've ever filmed, been on film for, wildly incoherent. You ever, this is what happens when you like make videos. You have to rewatch yourself and hear yourself and it's just like <sighs> It's like the cringiest shit of all time. And I'm like, bro, I hate me. I hate me. And for Amanda's sake, I'm not gonna put most of the shit that she had on there. I, I legitimately cut out probably 14 minutes of her and Heather and whoever the fuck else was there. I just needed to preface. I just needed to, this is a, a post. This is a thing after the thing. I, I just want to let you know that I know that that was the worst clip I've, I've ever put in a vlog. Okay? Fuck off.